I have had the incredible privilege of working with Mary Lou for 16 years now. It hardly seems that long, but I began at Jardiv in 2000, and Mary Lou was here as one of the founding members. I think there are three primary characteristics that come to mind uh, that have exhibited themselves over that time. And one of the first ones is just her integrity, her integrity as, as an advocate, as someone in the movement. Um, she's had a pretty remarkable life, and it's been a marriage, I think, of being in remarkable circumstances and remarkable times, and being a person with the ability and the capacity to respond to those times in specific ways. She's not someone who I think is an obvious leader in, in the sense of putting herself forward, um, but she is someone who's always going to be part of a leadership team because, in part, her integrity. Um, when we worked on a book together that we edited together, I remember in the dedication I did the usual thanks to my parents and my family, et cetera, and I, of course, I was sincere in that. Um, she wrote that her dedication was to the people with disabilities all over the world. And I understood then how deeply she felt the experience of people with disabilities all over the world. Um, she's able to take the experiences that she has had, experiences of discrimination, um, of challenge, of meeting barriers, and understands the depth to which others in different circumstances, in different cultures, also experience those barriers and those issues. And that's what drives her. I think that's always what has driven her. A very sincere understanding that keeps her working, keeps her motivated, keeps her up at night, um, and is, is the compelling force behind her work and is what makes her work compelling. It's never just a dry issue of policy. It's, it's real. It affects people. And she's never, ever lost sight of that. The second remarkable thing about Mary Lou is her marriage of pragmatism and a visionary sense of what can and should be in the world. You know, some people will look at, there's a stereotype that people will look at a glass of water and some will lament that it's half empty, some will rejoice that it's half full. Mary Lou will look at that water and will think, how can we take that and distribute it so that the most people will actually receive what they need from it? There's just this, she knows what's there, she doesn't pretty it up in her mind, um, she doesn't just, she's not just sad over it, she is always going to want, be working toward what can we do about it then, given what we have, given what the world should be like. How do we get from A to B? And that, that working on, that compelling kind of, I will get there, that has always helped to drive me too when I'm, as one of her colleagues, feeling tired and empty and not able to continue. And the third thing I think that really stands out for me is something I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily know the depth of if I hadn't worked for her as long as I have and worth, with her. Um, and that's just her generosity. It's something that animates her person. Um, what she has always freely shared with me is her time, her insights, her understanding of people, she has shared through example. Uh, she's never asked more of me than she is willing to give of herself, and that's been true of everyone I've seen her interact with. I've had a remarkable time here at Dredef. I mean, many, many individuals, Arlene, Susan, you know, I, I can't start naming names because I will <laughs> be here naming the entire staff, but I've learned from so many of them, and many of them have been generous. and have shown me by example, but I think Mary Lou is a presence, a presence that hovers over all of that for me. She just animates 
my experience here. She has been a foundation, um, and I cannot capture it any more than that. So thank you, Mary Lou, for being who you are and for giving me the chance to work with you for these many years.